So if we start with who's Marimal, can you tell us about your journey in your life? Oh, well, um, well, as you mentioned right now, well, I am an assistant professor uh, of chemical engineering in the Department of Chemical Engineering of uh, Toronto Metropolitan University. Um, I kind of feel like I was always uh, wanted to be an academic and uh, I always appreciated to be a teacher. So kind of like what I'm doing right now is very much aligned with uh, my aspirations. Um, yeah, so right now, um, thank you for the introduction, but uh, I can go a little bit more detail of, of uh, what we do or... Before what we do, I just want to put you on a time machine okay. and go back. I don't want to go that much, but maybe 20 years, 30 years when you were a child and how did you do it during your high school, your university? How did you decide to go to chemical engineering or... Oh, well, that's a very good question, actually. So, uh, actually, my, my bachelor degree was in materials engineering, so I didn't go to okay. chemical engineering. <laughs> I switched to chemical engineering while I was doing my master's in PhD. In grad school, I decided to do chemical engineering. But yeah, so thinking about it, um, I'm one of those really cliche, classic uh, kind of cases. I was uh, a studious student. <laughs> I was always like doing like uh, my homework well, mm -hmm. and uh, I ended up like uh, in a good university and uh, decided to do materials engineering. And a lot of people ask me why materials engineering is a very specific topic. So my father is a materials engineer. Oh, and okay. so the lingo of materials engineering, what was called metallurgical engineering, I heard a lot at home. Uh, and uh, that was one of the inspirations for me. I was like, oh, I really like, like what it did. So I'm, I'm going to do that at school as well. And um, I'm very happy I did it. I was a uh, um, basically successful undergrad. Uh, so which university did you do it at? So I, I did it at Sharif University in Iran. So That's it's one of, one of the good universities there. It's a top engineering school. Um, and um, interestingly enough, uh, when you said, let, let's look at um, like back a few years ago or when, when I started my undergrad, when I started, when I went to school and to, to uh, uh, the university, First term, I thought I will never make it to the end of it. <laughs> They're so difficult, I cannot do it. The, the big yeah. talk for us. Yeah. <laughs> so I tell, tell my students right now that that, that is how I felt. So like uh, even when I struggle, like, you know, in their PhD or undergrad or whatever, I tell them that I was really seriously thinking at the end of my first semester, this is not what I want to do. It, it, I don't think I have what it takes to finish, finish it, it, but, but uh, it ended up well at the end of the day. Okay, so you finished your uh, undergraduate degree in uh, material yes, engineering. Yes, yeah, yeah. And then did you go to industry after that or you decided direct to go to a graduate study? No, so I decided to do graduate studies. So I came to Canada, like uh, went to McGill, uh, okay. Department of Chemical Engineering and uh, started working. That's where I basically get to work with environmental, you know, materials like using materials for environmental treatment so the, the idea and the passion came from grad school actually so i did both my masters and also phd at the department of chemical engineering at mcgill so, so have you thought when you were a child that you're going to be a professor not really not really but as i was going forward i always realized that i like teaching so okay. that, gave me, that gave me a lot of joy um even even uh uh, you know, when, when I was in middle school, high school, uh, I, I found a lot of joy, like um, helping students who were doing really well. And I felt uh, um, a lot of, uh, you know, reward in doing so. So um, when, I, when I started my undergrad and started doing some volunteer uh, research in different research labs, I really knew that, okay, research is something that I want to do. Teaching is something I want to do. So that kind of like set my, uh, you know, career path. Okay. I see that um, you have some shifts in, in, your, um, in your career, but I understand that you get that inspiration about the material engineering from your father and uh, what you have um, engaged with him. But what makes you shift from material engineering to environmental engineering? Is it the opportunity or is it something that you decided to do? Uh, yeah, so that's a very good question. So chemical engineering is more application focused. So in materials engineer, we really focus on materials. We don't uh, really try to uh, investigate specific like applications. Yeah, there, there are applications for each materials, of course, but it's more the most focus is on 
developing some new materials, discovering some new materials. But what I liked about chemical engineering was that it was very much application focused. And one of the application in chemical engineering, same as in civil engineering is environment, environmental science, environmental engineering, using engineering solutions basically to uh, remediate the environment, to improve the environment, to monitor the environment. So that's why I shifted. I was like, I, I want to do something that is a little bit more environmental Direct related. Tell, yeah. And usually, um, as we both know, it's either yeah, in the civil engineering department or chemical engineering <laughs> department <laughs> in, in different parts of the world, of course. Yeah, so it's, it's like you have a tool of, you know, uh, science, the material, and then use that as an application. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Um, during our journey, um, you know, we, we do our graduate study, and during your graduate study, there are a lot of um, instructors and professors that is, has a positive impact in your career and inspire you. Um, if you would like to name one or two professors or instructors who really inspired you during the graduate or undergraduate study. Yeah, for sure. Um, uh, there were two professors who really, really uh, like helped me find my way. Uh, the first one was uh, uh, a professor in my undergrad. So his name uh, is Reza Bahiri, Dr. Bahiri. And uh, uh, I volunteered in his lab as a summer student for, for a couple of years, actually. Mm -hmm. So I, I had a study buddy uh, who was a professor now in the U.S. So he was like, oh, do you want to like, uh, it seems interesting to, to join a lab and, you know, work a little bit to get some hands-on experience. And I was like, yeah, sure. So uh, we knocked on this professor's door. <laughs> oh, okay. so emails were not that prevalent back then. So we knocked on his door and was there. I was like, oh, professor, we are two undergrad students, you know, we are very much interested in polymers and we want to do some research in polymers. And we know that you have a research lab. And he was a very kind person. He was like, oh, but do you know anything? Like, have you taken any course? And we said, no, no, we didn't. You haven't taken any course yet. And I was like, yeah, so if you like, this is a book and you know, uh, you, can, you can go read it anytime you want. Just knock on my door and have a chat. And <laughs> every week we would do that. And uh, now that I'm a professor, I'm realizing that how kind it was because usually we don't have that much time. Uh, so for two years, I was uh, volunteering in his lab as an undergrad student. And that really um shaped my uh you know career path and i knew that okay the research is something i really like to do it's a new day every day it's a new material every day and uh, then when i went to grad school i really have to thank my um phd supervisor mm. uh professor nally to so uh, she was more a mentor uh, for me and i think that is very very important to have a good mentor uh in, in during your phd because they can help you. She asked me, what do you want to do? I said, I want to become a professor. And uh, she was like, yeah, I, I see it in you that you can be. And we have to do a lot of things like um, for a few years, basically, to, to shape you in a way to work on your CV and uh, so on to help you achieve that. And I really appreciate it because it was very much like solution focused, very much like, OK, what do you want to get to focus on professional development and so on. So that is something that um, I try to do for my students as much as I can. I know that in academia, it's a mix usually. So sometimes um, um, some research labs really focus on the research skills mostly, and uh, some research labs are not. But it's, I think it's a good balance between the two. So your research skills and what you want to do afterwards, because that is the most important thing that we want, don't want to deal with when the student is, uh, you know, graduating. It's too late already, like to decide, oh, what do you want to do now? Yeah. Yeah, so this is about your PhD supervisor. So we understand that the PhD supervisor role in, in, in our life is, is significantly important. But what stuff that you learned from your supervisor that and you kept them with you while you are a faculty member now and you are supervising students? So what what the, the good thing that, oh, my supervisor was doing this and um, I want to keep it and I'm trying to practice it to my Current yeah, there were there were many different things. One of them was giving uh, you know the freedom to do research. Uh, so giving the students who are willing and are interested in in doing research to pursue their ideas, because sometimes um, and I appreciate it because my supervisor gave me this opportunity uh, to make mistakes and learn from them. Uh, not really big cool. mistakes, but uh, <laughs> research <laughs> mistakes to, to to do and learn from them. And uh, I like to provide that opportunity to my students as well, to have that freedom to uh, work on their ideas, to see if they work or not, uh, to give it, give it a shot, basically. And um, uh, I think that is very important. The lab environment is very important um, to have a really collaborative, uh, 
lab where students work with each other and they're happy to come to the lab. I think that's one of the most important things uh, for PhD students. I mean, these days we keep talking about, you know, uh, mental health of uh, grad students, especially for a PhD program, which is very long, open-ended. And one of the things that can help them have a more safe place, more, you know, cultivating place is to have an amicable environment, have lab members to help them, supervisors that help them, staff that help them and so on. So I've been striving and I learned it from my supervisor because our lab was very, very amicable, collaborative and so on. So for giving you the opportunity now to say something to your supervisor, what do you want to tell her? I would say like, thank you very much, Ali. Like uh, you gave me this opportunity. I I'd like to thank you. And uh, a lot of things that you said that I didn't realize back then, now I understand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're, this is the point. Yes, realize yeah. the, when you go I'll back, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and this break, the thing that is during our, you know, um, graduate study, we have some up and down. Some, some, some days it's, oh, it's an amazing day for us, and some days are really not, not the good days. Mm -hmm. um, if you bring your maybe um, memory back to those days, and if you pick one or two good memories yes. uh, that during your graduate study, what would you remember that comes to your mind? Well, yeah, many things. Well, usually we become very happy when... Many, leaders, that means you have a, ha a happy life. <laughs> <Yeah. during that. laughs> relatively, yeah, relatively good. Uh, you know, of course, for any grad student, when you publish papers, get awards, this sort of things, graduate, these are like happy moments. But for me, the happiest of them was when we finished work and uh, the grad student would go for, you know, a drink, for a coffee, for some tea. And... Uh, that was a really good cap on a day and uh, that gave us um, that gave me a lot of like uh, comfort um, at the end of the day when we went to like especially in cold winters of Montreal going getting you know a hot coffee or a uh, the hot tea like yeah. basically it's very nice <laughs> <laughs> at the end of the day yeah. so are you trying to practice that with your grandmas in those days that's to take them for a coffee or for an ice cream or uh, I have to say, I'd like to do more. Yeah, okay. I, I have done that before, <laughs> but I'd like to do more. Unfortunately, COVID caused a lot of like disruption in, in universities. Like um, most of the cohort of the students that I have right now, um, we hired them during COVID. At the beginning, it was very, I mean, now we, when we look back at it, it's really strange because for two years, you didn't really see your grad student in person. It was all online. Um, but yeah, this is something I'm really looking forward to this summer. We were just in May now. Um, the fact that we, we can do a lot of fun stuff. Uh, most of my grad students are about to graduate. So they're towards the end of their uh, program. So they're a little bit more relaxed and more, more so time. Yeah. Maybe, maybe you think this year to do uh, a barbecue with them. Oh, so yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, definitely we're going to do that. Yeah, to, to a park. <clears throat> so this is about the, the good memories during our grad. But sometimes also during our grad, so we have some like a tough time or a hard time. Do you remember something that happened during your graduate study that was really tough? And what did you do to overcome that? Um, yeah, so there was this, uh, I mean, this is again, quite cliche. Uh, the rejections, <laughs> paper rejection, <laughs> board rejection <laughs> is usually like very tough. Uh, but uh, what I found the toughest was that um, my work was mostly experiments. And a lot of the time uh, the experiments didn't work and I had to figure out a new way. Uh, to do things. So that, that was the most challenging part. And I always tell my students that PhD is a game of perseverance. Uh, you need that skill more than anything else because it's open-ended. It's usually multiple years. It can take three to six years, for example, in engineering, depending on what kind of project you have. Six years. <laughs> you start to, to scare them. Yeah, it's just, just limits. Yeah. Yeah. Four, I mean, typically it's four, maybe exactly, a little bit. Exactly. Bad, yeah. So, um, basically uh, keeping that, that spirit and uh, persevere through all the difficulties is something that, that students need to like cultivate. At the beginning, it was very difficult for me to uh, gain that, but one of my mentors actually, another professor told me, uh, it is a game of perseverance and, I, and this is his words. And it was like, you have to like make sure that even if you fail, you come to lab another day, take some break, come to lab another day, I'll try to use another technique, talk to people, so on and so forth. But those moments, especially when you have a, you think you have a really big idea and you go to the lab and you want to do something and uh, you do it and then it fails, it's really heartbreaking. Yes. 